Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, we had another week, another great episode of Bad Batch, and I put up a reaction video, but sadly, YouTube did not like it. So, uh, I'm just gonna share my thoughts. I'm gonna do that right now. All right, so right from the jump, we get into it. They're already on a mission. They've retrieved this lizard thing, and we get to see Wrecker bonk his head again, again. Like I was freaking out. I'm like, okay, obviously this is is going to be the episode. We'll, so we'll see what happens. We had that hidden figure. So as soon as I looked up, we got to see some eyes. I was like, yeah, yeah, we we know who this is. Rex is back. There's so much hurt in what he was saying. He says, what's in your head is more dangerous than you can imagine. I've seen what happened when those chips activate, You and I don't want to bury any more of my brothers. Trust me, it's not something you can control. I couldn't. And like that, that just hit me, because you know he's thinking about Jesse in that moment. You know that he has, he's thinking about pulling his gun on Ahsoka with tears in his eyes and being unable to control it, unable to stop it. Whew, it hurt. It's always nice when your predictions come true. I wasn't sure exactly how they were going to do this, but as they are going to Bracca, which is what I had mentioned all over on um, Star Wars Explains podcast. Uh, yeah, but they're going to Bracca. They're going to find the same type of ship that had the med bay that Rex was able to use in order to get his ship out. That's where they're headed. Awesome. It's interesting to note that somewhere around here, we have a young Cal Kestis running around. Yeah, he's like Omega's age. He's still a child at this point, and it's not going to be for another uh, five, six years that until we see him um, in in the game Fallen Order. But yeah, I believe their uh, Star Destroyer, not Star Destroyer, but their <laughs> Jedi Cruiser was uh, above Bracca when order 66 happened and that's where the whole thing ends up coming down so that's kind of where he's hiding out but obviously he's too little um we don't know what his story is at this point in time we're not gonna see him but it's just interesting i love the tie-in uh we also have it in resistance reborn uh by rebecca roundhorse where they explain you know uh, at one point we do see the tentacles and you know we do see the monster in Jedi Fallen Order, but it's not explained. But uh, on the planet lives what's called the Ibdis Ma, and it's similar to a Sarlacc. However, what it does is it'll eat metal and stuff like that. And the waste, like, it poops out, <laughs> like, differently refined metal. So that, that's actually why it's the Scrapper planet, because uh, they feed it starships and all types of crap. And what comes out the other end is what they end up selling to other people. It's uh, pretty interesting. Okay, they can't keep doing the same exact trope. You can't have like him, Wrecker, having to cross like some sort of chasm and be afraid to do it every time, every episode, you know? Um, and then, then bump his head. So that's... I love Wrecker. I don't want to see the same gag over and over again. But it was cool when he fell in the water and we actually see an Ibdis Maw pop up. Um, that's what they look like. Kind of like a, a wet Sarlacc, except that one was tiny compared to the big giant ones that eat portions of starships. Uh, but yeah, it was it was awesome to see. Okay, so we knew Wrecker was going to activate, but man, it still hurts to see. Like, he was this close to making it out. But it leads me to a question, because... It wasn't until Rex said Order 66, and then they spoke about how they were, like, insubordinate in regards to that order. So I'm curious when exactly the chip activated, because it's not like when it activates, you just go crazy immediately. I'm curious if it's just been activated this entire time, but nobody said Order 66 or mentioned Jedi escaping or anything like that. Um, I don't know. I think that's interesting, but man... The music gets intense. Um, he throws tech like a little punk. Yeah, he is not someone to be trifled with. And this also makes me really, like, scared for all the people that we've seen him face up until now. Because we see the nice jovial side. They see that big, terrifying, like, lumbering brute that's just gonna end them. 
everyone was able to get their chip out. That is awesome. But it also kind of goes back to something I've been thinking for a while. We now have extra proof that the people are aware of what's going on while the chip is activated, while they're killing their friends. They know what they're doing and they can't stop it. It's like a real Bucky Barnes situation. And it's, uh, it's interesting because now they know what Crosshairs is going through. Now they're going to understand that he is aware of what he's doing and he does not want to be doing it. Uh, it's kind of hard to believe because Crosshair's kind of a dick, but, you know, <laughs> it, uh, it, it it is what it is. Um, but, yeah, this leads me to believe that they're going to try their absolute hardest to rescue Crosshair, to remove Crosshair's chips. They're going to need to find a new way to do it because now that the Empire knows about this location, they'll investigate and see exactly what was done. Uh, but, yeah, I think that's going to be really interesting that they're going to be essentially hunting each other but knowing each other's tactics so we'll see how that whole thing plays out and if crosshairs can i don't know awake from his actions long enough to give the bad batch an edge my long-term prediction though is that they do it uh they're going to be able to free crosshairs from uh, from the chip and they're going to use their knowledge of the chip and with echo and with tech they're going to try and break back into camino they're going to try to enter something to the system in order to prevent those chips from going into anyone else uh and also to try and deactivate everyone that is there I'm just curious what the Kaminoans are up to because I feel like they're going to try and start some other conflict so that they can prove that clones are useful so that the Empire will keep them around. Uh, I think the Empire is going to get wise to that and it's going to storm Kamina with stormtroopers and we're going to have stormtroopers versus clone troopers while the Bad Batch is running around trying to deactivate as many of the chips as possible. Uh, I hope we get there but we'll see. Another thing that was interesting is, you know, when Rex leaves, he calls someone and tells them to meet him at the rendezvous point. Some people are speculating who this is. It's not Ahsoka. That's, it's not. I'm sorry. But there you have it. Those are my thoughts on Bad Batch episode number seven. Uh, I loved it. This one is 10 out of 10 for me. Love seeing Rex. I'm happy we're not going to see him all of the time because I do think it'll take away from the Bad Batch who are definitely strong enough to hold a show on their own. And I don't want this to be like a cameo fest. But yeah, I'm really excited to, <laughs> to see more. I mean, I'm gripped. I'm gripped. I don't know if anyone else is still complaining about the slow start. But yeah, I'm loving the Bad Batch and can't wait to see more let me know what you guys think um down in the comments if if you're loving it what you thought of this episode 10 out of 10 or whatnot and as always like subscribe share and do all the things if you like the content i'm putting up i would love to put up more but i gotta know what you guys like all right until the next time may the force be with you